Thanks very much for this opportunity to give you a brief update on uh, our activities, what's coming up in the next three months. I'll come back in September and let you know how the summer's gone and preview for you our September, October, November final events. But first of all, thank you very much for those of you who were able to come to our big kickoff on May 1st when uh, Peter and Thomas Campbell premiered their movie, uh, Cape Elizabeth, Time's Flowing Tide. Those DVDs will be available for purchase at their own website, and that's now on the town's um, 250 website area if you'd like to grab one of those. Uh, I thought they did a terrific job with a pretty complicated past and summarized it in a nice way in a short history video. So thanks very much for coming. We had about a total of about 150 people that evening come out for the four screenings. So thank you for your participation. I have for you, if you were not there that evening, um, one of the ways the committee is promoting all our activities are through some bookmarks that don't have all the data, but it shows dates. So if anyone is interested in any of these events, um, they can then go to the town website to read updates. So I'll pass those along. I'll save one to refer to briefly. We've had our two bus tours, uh, North and South Cape, and approximately 70 citizens took advantage of that on the past two Saturdays. And coming up this Wednesday, right in the chambers, will be our main state historian, Earl Shuttleworth, who you may have read about recently, is about to retire as the main state historian in October. And he'll be speaking about the art and architecture of John Calvin Stevens right here in the chambers. Uh, followed on Saturday by a walking tour of Delano Park that Bob Ayotte's going to lead that will highlight um, several homes in Delano Park that he designed. And so we're really looking forward to that. We already have 30 reservations for that, and it's limited. So I encourage people to call if they would like to participate. You may also have received this invitation from Pond Cove this week about the dramatic presentation their children will be presenting on Thursday night following the visiting artist Gretchen Berg and all her work with the fourth graders. I went in one day to see Gretchen. She worked in my classroom 20 years ago. And, and so it was great to see her working with the kids as well as the murals the third graders are working on that will be a permanent installation in the lobby of Pond Cove. They're just outstanding. So if you are able to come Thursday, it'll be a full house, I'm sure. And sadly, we haven't been able to open that fully to the public because with all the parents and grandparents and us, <laughs> it's going to fill the cafeteria, I think. But take advantage of that if you can. Um, I'd like to make one plug for the Memorial Day Parade. We're trying something different this year, and we're asking what we've determined to be our legacy families to participate along with our veterans and other youth organizations, and, and I think all of you march as well. And we're calling our legacy families, all families who have ties of at least 100 years to this community. And there are many people, uh, including people sitting up in front of us, right, Caitlin, <laughs> with, with very long ties to this area. Uh, Randy Blake is taking reservations by phone, and we'll have posters made of the family name. So the Jordans will have a poster, and the Murrays, and the Hannafords, and the McClellans, and whoever uh, calls to say they'd love to participate. We have fourth, a fourth grade class that's been willing to create posters with the family name. So I'm hoping it'll lend a real sort of air of uh, longevity uh, about the commitment people have had to our town. June, of course, Family Fun Day comes along on the 13th. They're going to have a big focus on celebrating uh, the 250, and it'll feature a uh, birthday cake our kindergarten students have made for 250, because that's sort of what kids can relate to. Happy birthday, Cape Elizabeth, right? And they're working on, Debbie Butterworth's working on crafts and games that are old-fashioned for kids to enjoy at that. Uh, followed the following weekend by an ice cream social at Turkey Hill Farm that will also have special activities for the kids. Uh, that is a free of charge event. Again, the budget you gave us to work with, we're, we're doling out slowly but surely and covering the cost of most of our events this summer. Uh, and then, of course, the Strawberry Festival follows that. The Paint for Preservation auction, which is a Cape Elizabeth Land Trust function, is going to feature a donated painting by Holly Reedy of an historic area of Cape, the whole Spurwink Marsh area. And the proceeds from that will help fund the uh, symphony, which July 25th 
uh, we're, we're scheduled to have them join us at the fort. Let me give you some update about that because that was a, you know, Michael and I have spent a lot of time with Bob Ayat talking about the finances about that, and I'm pleased to tell you we've raised half of the cost of the symphony already here in May. So we're, we're selling 3,000 general admission tickets. We've sold over 800. We've got the 250 circle, and so far we've sold, we've sold $10,750 of the 250 circle. So buy tickets quickly if you're thinking about participating in that. Uh, so our total revenue to date is $71,120, uh, and that includes a projection of trying to have $20,000 uh, in net proceeds for the children's garden. So we're right on track. We've had a lot of great media partnership with the Portland Press Herald, Main Home and Design, and we have a very active Facebook presence. So social media, print media, word of mouth, it's getting out there and the tickets are going. So that's quite exciting. We just need to pray for good weather. And then finally, uh, in August, for our last summer event, there'll be a, just a, um, on a much more modest scale, a nose game making uh, activity on, a, on a August 15th at Norm Jordan's farm, where he's going to let people to pick flowers and someone will be there to teach them what it means and to make little nose gays. So I'll come back and talk about the fall after we launch all of this. And uh, again, I appreciate your, your uh, participation. Any questions for the committee? We meet again next Monday night. Questions for Barbara? Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And I would like to add that a big part of our, um, a big part of our funding for the symphony, uh, besides the contribution from our own committee, has been through presenting sponsor TD Bank. But uh, 20 s small businesses in Cape, people who do business in Cape, residents of Cape that own businesses came forth with $500 to $1,500 sponsorships that really put us over the top. So very robust involvement from our business community. So I wanted to let you know. Thank you Kat, very Kathy, much. Just a, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, Barbara, the banners on the light poles oh, the look absolutely fabulous. Oh, great. And those were designed by Darren McClellan on our committee. And we walked the street and, and tied little tape on so, the, so Bob Malley and his folks would know where to put them up. And they're, they're quite heavy. They're this fabric. This is one of our other banners. That will be carried in the parades. And uh, so it's, that, it's those colors and that fabric. So I appreciate it. I think, I think they're going to last the season all the way into November. So thank you. That's great. Thank you again.